Hola amigos, today I bring you a new Niagara tutorial which highlights a technique that some of you might not be aware of. A common characteristic of many effects are particles moving in a spiral or circular motion. For example, you might want swirling energy around a spell effect or highlight an important object with glowing spirals or something like that. I just searched Magic Effect Unreal in Google Images and a few of these first results already have effects like the one I described. However, take a look at this one. The particles are following a spiral around the center line, but when I move the view, they still rotate around this center axis creating this nice swirly motion. This type of effect could be quite challenging to achieve by adding forces or velocities. You can do something similar by sampling particles from another meter, but it is hard to have a consistent render with no artifacts. Instead, this works by overriding the default rendering bindings to paint the particles offset from their actual position. To demonstrate all this, let me create a basic Niagara system from an emitter, add an empty emitter, and then give it a name. I'll call this one a spiral and dive into it. So if I want to make a spiral out of this, first I want to change the life cycle to self, keep it on infinite, add some particles to play with, uh, with a spawn rate of, let's say, uh, 10 particles. And then if we search for vortex on the particle update, we have two results, vortex force and vortex velocity. Vortex force is a bit more straightforward to use, so let's stick with that one. Now we have the classic error or of not having the solve forces and velocity, which we can auto add here by clicking the fix issue. And now if we hit play, uh, nothing happens. Let's change the axis to the X. So now we should have our particles moving in a very large spiral. So large that it doesn't even complete one revolution. So if we wanted to, this to move faster, let's say we want these particles to move, to have a lot of force, so they travel a lot. Yeah, but now the spiral is huge, so we can fix that by increasing the origin pull amount. Let's say double that, so what was it? 5,000, so 10,000. And hit play. And now we have a spiral, but it got quite large. So if we increase this even more, things start to get a little bit out of control because these values start to be very high. And on top of that, if I wanted to combine this with other forces, then it starts to get a little bit out of control. Let's say I'm going to add an add velocity here on the particle spawn. Let's make it also on the x-axis, so 100. And See, it starts small, then it moves forward a little bit, and then the spiral grows like immediately. And if I add more particles, you can see that there is some kind of issue with how the noise, the vortex is applied. It's a cool effect, don't get me wrong, it's a cool spiral, but it's not exactly what I wanted to get. There's also another issue which we can see if we can play this, uh, have this uh, in motion. Let me add one of these to the viewport. So if I let it play, we can see we have our huge spiral galaxy around, which is pretty cool. We can use this for some other effect. But if I move it around, you can see that it's losing its shape. And maybe I want it to keep some of the dynamics, but still move as a spiral. And that is very complicated to do just using forces. It's not impossible, but I would need to add like different uh, point attractors and, and other forces to repel these or control these and probably like custom scripts to do all that by hand. So instead, we can do a little trick by changing the bindings of the sprite or whatever renderer we're using. Let's see how all that works. And let's start by removing the vortex force so we have just our particles moving in line. And I'm going to make this move a little faster. Let's say 500. 
Okay. So, if we go to the sprite renderer, we can see that one of the sections is called bindings, and one of the bindings is a position binding. These are all the values that Niagara is passing to the renderer, so the renderer knows where to paint all these sprites. And nothing stops from using a different value for position. So let's go to particle update and add a set new existing parameter directly and add a new parameter of the type position. Oh. Don't click on the particles position, we are adding a new position parameter. So we can change this one to, I don't know, new position. And let's say we are going to add a vector to a position. Now, the position would be the particle's position. So we can find it here. And let's say that for now we want to move these particles up. So let's take the z-axis and say, like, I don't know, 50. So if I go to the sprite renderer now and change the position binding to this new parameter that we created, all our particles move a little bit up. And now if we change this parameter here, let's say to 100, now all particles are painted here. Now, in the simulation, our particles are still going in a line here. We're just painting them in a different position. Now, let's make this value a bit more interesting. Now, all these operations could be done with a single expression, but I think it's better if I do all the steps separately so it's easier to see what each, what each one of them does. Let's there be changing this vector to an add vector. We're going to add two vectors together. Okay, so the first one, we're going to do a multiply vector by float. So the, the vector is going to be the direction in which we're going to move our particles. Let's say we're going to move them vertically. So the set axis. And this amount is going to be a multiply float. So again, we're multiplying two floats together. Now, the first one is going to be a sign. And if we just hit play, it will be hard to see, but our particles are moving one unit up and down all together. Let's increase this value here, this B, to, I don't know, let's say 200. And we can see that the whole system is moving up and down. And that's because for the normal, for the angle of the sign, we're using the H of the emitter, which is the same for the whole system, for the, all the particles. Now, if we change this for particle H, here. Now we have our particles moving in a sign motion, which is pretty cool, and we can change the period here to make them fa move faster or to move it slower. Let's say, let's keep it at one for now. Now let's do the same for B. So let me pause this and let's start by here. We are multiply vector by float. And then the vector will change this to be the y-axis, so 0, x, 0, z. And the float, we're going to again multiply float. And this time, instead of sine, we're going to use the cosine. Again, we need to change the emitter h for particle h. And let's say I have the same radius. And our particles are moving in a spiral. Again, the particles are moving really in a straight line. We're just rendering them as a spiral. Let's keep improving on this. Let's change the radius from a constant value to a float from curve. Here and here. And then change the profile of this curve to be a bell curve, or a ramp up down. And instead of changing the scale curve on both, let's create a float value here as a user parameter, so we don't have to remember to match both values. I'm going to call this radius, I don't know, 150, 
and then oh, where's the scale here and here and now we can see that the profile of the effect matches the profile of this curve the other thing I want to do is add another user parameter another float call this one period and oh, drag it to both the sine and the cosine here and let's say 0 0.5 Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, the other thing I want to do is change the sprite render for a ribbon renderer. Remove this, keep this one, and then we need to update the binding. There we go. And now we need to increase the ribbon width so let's set this to 100 and now we are going to scale this on the particle update stage using a scale ribbon width and just use the same curve that we're using for the other values and the last thing i'm going to remove the sprite renderer and change this to a material i made which i will show in a moment Called plasma ribbon and maybe change the UV setting so it's tiled by segment length and maybe increase this to 1000 and maybe now I want to increase this to 150 200 maybe yeah and maybe give it a color Perfect. The last thing I want to do to match the effect that I showed at the beginning is to copy this one. And then on this copy, I'm going to remove the new position and then restore the ribbon renderer to use the same variable that we use by default. And now I want to change also the color so it's something maybe brighter. Yeah, like that. And remember, since we are just moving the particles around a, a line, we can modify that line. Maybe add in a curl noise force. Kind of subtle. And maybe pan it around a little bit. We can now copy this and paste it here. And this is more or less what I had at the beginning. Let's look at the material now. So it's pretty simple. I'm just, let's change this so it's easier to see. So I'm generating first a mask from the texture coordinate here. Let me preview this node just to fade the ribbon at the edges. Now I'm also panning this to, on a on the panning the coordinates and passing that to a texture sample of this texture, which is included as a download in the description of the video. Now the color of the texture is then multiplied by the particle color, by the mask, and passed as the emissive color, and then the one of the channels, the red one, is multiplied by the alpha of the particle. And then for the by the mask before being uh, output as opacity, and that's basically this effect that I showed at the beginning. Yes, the same two emitters with the same material and very similar parameters. And that's all I have for today. I think this is a very interesting technique that can be the base of a multitude of different effects. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to build up on this one and add a few more layers to it to, be the, to make it a bit more spectacular. See you next time!